stabbed him is how you kill a guy with a potato. A potato? Okay. okay. Just right there. Right up, Ma- right up Main Street? Okay, okay. Twisting motion. Ha ha ha. Are we recording? Yeah. We probably should. T- Tony. T- Hi, Tony. welcome to Short and Tall with uh, Tony and Tim. T- short and I'm Tall? Tom. Close enough. Close. Close. <laughs> hey, hey, potato. Oh, God. I'm, I'm Tony. I'm not gonna look at. I'm not gonna look at. Uh, pota- I'm gonna say tomatoes. Good God. <laughs> I'm not gonna look at. To- I'm not. Gonna- ah! And that's Tim having a mental break. Uh, I'm not gonna look at potatoes the same way again. And I'm part Irish. <laughs> God damn it, Why Tony. Why do you think the potato will have to have a famine happen? Turn on the nanimate. I will murder you. <laughs> We're off to a fantastic start, aren't we? Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. Now. Uh, Tall and short with Tim and Tony. What'd I say? You said short and tall with well, Tony and Tim. You, know, you, it's, you it's, reversed it. It's like a cell phone uh, signal bar tower thing. It's you can get the words out. I'll let you it's keep going. Enough. Okay. You know what? I'm, I was going to start out easy on this. The largest recorded frog. Yeah. You're just going right there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. The largest frog. 13 inches long, excluding the legs. Uh-huh. And can weigh up to seven pounds. They are known as Goliath frogs. I know what they look like. Uh huh. I know what they look like. You're a monster. Oh, it's gonna get so much worse. For <sighs> me. Today we're talking about uh, gigantism and um, how that has changed in animals over the millennia, not even centuries, straight millennia. And I'm going to go far, as far back as a couple hundred million years on this to sort of show this growth and then this decline in uh, animal size and how that's affected everything and evolution overall. Uh-huh. So, obviously, starting off strong with the Goliath frogs. I had, so we're going to do, some, we're gonna do something, you're sort of gonna get starting off sop. Were you going to do something else before the mention yeah, of Goliath Yeah, frog? I was going to talk about how uh, animals used to be a lot larger back in the day. Large? Okay. I, yeah, you, you the got... Goliath frog is a shrimp. The prehistoric devil frog that uh, lived 65 to 70 million years ago, Uh huh. 16 inches on average, then weighed in at 10 pounds. Jesus Christ. That is anyway. Uh, listener, you can't see the look of abject fear on my face right now, but yeah. it's it is an absolute look of terror, and my mustache is actually fraying at the idea. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get for bringing serial killers into this. Yeah, I'm I'm not even mad. I'm not even Slow mad. Slow burn. That's amazing. That's impressive, that's impressive. In that's fact. impressive. In fact, <laughs> you know I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> We just got done talking about a, a Spanish creature, anyway. So that well, uh, oddly that ter- oddly that uh, that tails in very nicely. So, what was I talking about before we edited? <laughs> talking about giant frogs. Oh yeah, giant frogs. You love those. Ah, I thought. Okay, so my fiance and I went down to San Antonio. Uh-huh. Not not San Antonio. I'm already. I'm. I'm I am jibber jabber here. Uh. Austin. We went down to Austin, Texas. Oh yeah. Over the yeah. summer, and we went to the Austin Aquarium, which when we got there, not impressed. It was mm-hmm. very much like a for-profit location. There was, n- it was not like an uh, an actual aquarium. Yeah, it, it was, was a for-profit. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. It was. It was very. It was Tiger it, King-ish. It was in a fucking strip mall. Oh. Yeah, it looked like a. We were like, is this it? So we got in there and we're walking through, you know, checking everything, like, you know, did our thing. Near the end, the, I saw the uh, sign for it and I quickly looked away. They had an actual cane toad. Nice. Yeah, nice for you, but the literal devil to me. And in fact, I actually caught a glimpse of the fucker. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, uh... Listeners, I, again, I can't. This is an this is an audio medium. I am holding my hands up like I am holding a football. This is an audio friendly podcast. 
Yep. Only. I am holding up my hands like I'm holding up a football. The th- the, the 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 toad was. Yeah, it's like a Nerf ball. It's fine. Whatever. Calm it down. was still huge, Calm and down. It's I. Not that big. My skin did crawl. Like I was like, ah, no. <laughs> Back to the topic at hand, we talked about <laughs> giant frogs and toads, and now prehistoric creatures were much bigger. Yes. I'm gonna keep us on track here. Are we? Because I feel like we could talk about this all day. Ah, <laughs> you just want my reactions, you son Absolutely. of a bitch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, so, no, wait, you know, your mother's not. Your mother's actually a wonderful person. I am not gonna ever call you a son of a bitch, because your mother's actually a very lovely person. <laughs> Unless you get on her bad side. Oh, um, yeah. Anyway! Oh, okay. Gigantism in the natural world. The phenomenon of gigantism in, can come from a vast array of things. It can come from basically the perfect ecosystem for that build of a creature. It could come from mutation and evolution of genes. It can come from very lucky breeding of creatures to and through evolution into this. But some of the examples I wanted to throw at you to exemplify how big animals used to be in the day. How big are ostriches? About nine, eight feet tall, somewhere in there. They're they're pretty big. Like I could probably ride one. Yeah, yeah, because you're four foot two. <laughs> Don't listen to them. I'm five foot six. I'm far from four foot two. But I would I mean, to be honest, come on. If you had the option to actually hop on an ostrich and ride it and everything, you would you would absolutely do that. I would, maybe. I feel like that is that doesn't look comfy. I think if it had the right saddle. I want to see the saddle for an ostrich. Because <laughs> it's, it's not a Western style horse saddle. It's definitely not an English style. Now, it, there might be a way to drown it. I don't know. So, anyway. Yes. My point is... So, ostriches are big-ass yeah, birds. Standard African ostriches are probably eight, nine, maybe ten feet tall on a good day. Uh, the moas. I'm familiar with moas. 510 pounds on average and average of, tw- average of 12 foot. 12 foot average. So, so big bird for sure. Yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be a fun chicken roast. Yeah, except the claws are bigger than your face. Why? <laughs> but uh, that that thing could gore me. Yeah, just like a cassowary on steroids. Oh, okay, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, and I've seen cassowaries. Those those things are mean fuckers. Yeah, those are the real evils of the world. <laughs> I mean, those big birds like cassowaries, emus, ostriches, yeah. they're evil. They're mean birds. Like, yeah. Unless, <clears throat> who oddly find humans attractive. Well, we're screwed. Oh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen. Well, e- you're we, screwed. We got to kink shame emus and ostriches because I've seen videos where there's, where they're, they're just trying, they're like trying to. Don't castle my wary. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Before I was rudely interrupted. My apologies. <laughs> Um, just, that's one example of a bird itself being basically an apex predator to a point. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, sloths. Yes. They're adorable, right? Because they're like 20 pounds and they're like two foot long. Yeah, I'm familiar with those. How about eight foot tall sloth? Oh yeah, the mega, megalania. Megatherium. Megatherium. Megalania is from story. Yeah, (laughs) I've heard about megatherium and those... I think that would actually come to me. Sorry, I had a stroke, everyone. I think it would be cool to actually see one of those live because yeah. I've seen um, artists like yeah. statues of them, it, and they look badass. Yeah, just it looks like a giant herbivorous bear. Yeah, but eight foot tall, average eighty eight hundred pounds <laughs> estimate. Mm-hmm. And there's allegedly still sightings of them in South America, around uh, Colombia, you know, sort of on the northern rim of South America. Yeah, like names like the Mapinguari. Exactly, the Mapinguari. Mm-hmm. We all know about woolly mammoths. Yep. And how we're apparently trying to clone and bring them back to life because we haven't seen Jurassic Park. 
Woolly mammoths, if I'm not mistaken, they were around mm. near. They were they they 30, survived thousand. around hmm? thirty thousand years ago. Yep, like they like were, right on the cusp. They were around for a while, like at the beginning of at the beginning of human civilization. Mm-hmm. I mean, the cave paintings and the weaponry. Oh, I mean, I was talking like Egypt. Like I'm pretty certain that there were still some woolly mammoths roaming around at the time when Egypt was starting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we are. We were very close in that crossover of, I guess, in rel- in time relativity, modern humans mm-hmm. and woolly mammoths being on their out. Which is so strange to think about, because it's like yeah. when we think of woolly mammoths, I think of like years ago, but when, it, like, we're talking yeah. Uh, yeah, we're, millennia we're, ago. Yeah, we're thinking a couple million years. No, it or 10,000 even. But it was no. a five digit number or a six digit number. Yeah, simple. Yeah. But um, modern day African elephants range anywhere from about ten to twelve, maybe. Woolly mammoths were uh, actually about nine to twelve foot tall on a bull at the shoulder. Yeah, so our modern elephants are bigger than woolly about mammoths. the same size, give or take. Yeah, but the size of the tusks whole different ball game. Woolly oh. mammoths had giant, giant uh, antlers. <laughs> Tusks. Excuse me, ladies. My antler. Excuse me, ladies. My eyes are up here. Oh my god. <laughs> but ten foot, eleven foot, twelve foot tusk on some males have been discovered. Massive freaking thing. Oof. But the one I really wanted to talk about because I love this thing. The Titan boa. Oh, I've heard about this mm-hmm. bad boy. And by the way, if anybody here is scared of snakes, this. Is your worst nightmare. The Titan Boa lived 60 to 58 million years ago. Very small, gap, about 2 million year time gap there. Okay, so lived for, so lived essentially like right after the dinosaurs, like. Right on the cusp. Yeah, right, because 65 million years ago is when the so Cretaceous they, period roughly ended. Yeah, and they were there 60 to 58, so, so I never get this right. So the lower the number. The closer to our time it was. Yes. Okay. So I know for being a wanting to be a paleontologist for a half my life, I suck at time. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like we could talk about like Rome. It's like oh, it happened in eight hundred eight happened eight hundred BC to seven hundred BC. Just isn't yeah. which is not Roman time. I know that, but it, I just had to pick a random time. He doesn't in history. know that. That's exactly what he thinks. He talks about it all the time. Oh, for- please write. Please write an email about it to him. Oh, yeah. I'm horrible with time. Anyway. So, two million time year of this nightmare fuel. Of this giant serpent. Mostly found, again, northern, south, northern South America. Colombia, northern Brazil, that Okay, area. so, near, so around the Amazon. Yeah, northern, northern rim of the Amazon. With a name like Titan Boa, and I'm sure you actually know, but... Off the cuff, how big do you think this thing measured in at usually? Uh, at, just off the fossils we have? Man, I, I think I've seen this. I want to say 60 feet, roughly 20 meters in length. I, I'm, I'm going off the cuff here. The specimens that of the jaw bones, because we've only found a couple, I think it was a few ribs, a couple of vertebrae, and some jaw bones. Yeah. The estimates put this thing anywhere from 42 to 50 feet. Okay, so I overshot it. Not mm, not by much. Because they're thinking of most of them, them were late juvenile, early adult. Oh, baby. So they think they still had a few more feet in them. So you said 50 feet at the max, and I thought 60 feet. So, okay, yeah, yeah. So you're in the realm of possibility if it's actually juvenile bones and young adult bones that mm-hmm. we found. 1,600 to 2,500 pounds. Oh, yeah, that would have... The, for the young adults. That would have to be, because, I mean, uh, I don't own any snakes, but I have friends who own snakes, and I have held snakes before. They They're are heavy. dense. Yeah, because it's all one big muscle. Mm-hmm. But this thing, you know, quarter, or a, a ton and a quarter, I don't care how slow it is. I don't... Mm-mm, mm-mm. I could only imagine how I could only imagine how heavy the bones were, or because 
something yeah. that heavy would have to have some really, really strong bones. Yeah. But, yeah, the terrifying to even think about because the head, if that thing was roughly, let's let's go 45 feet. Yeah. The head on that thing had to be at least five foot, I would think. Maybe a little small. Maybe let's go. Let's go like four four foot, give or take. Yeah. Snake's jaws unhinged to open. We don't stand a chance. Yeah. No. Their their jaw. Their jaw is. I've actually seen um in that. Uh, yeah. Do I remember? Remember the show Most Extreme? Mm-hmm. On Animal Planet, I remember them talking about python jaws yeah. and bow, like specifically a lot of constrictor jaws. Yeah. Their jaws are designed to open at nearly one eighty degrees because yeah. they because ha- they have that extra hinge and their jawbone splits. Yeah, and this thing was a constrictor snake, so so no, so that thing had the extra hinge and probably the splitting jaw. That yeah, yeah that thing could easily swallow a, a human whole. Yeah, without he's without question. Oh yeah. Makes me think of the movie Anaconda. That's and that's what I wanted to segue in a little bit was <clears throat> I feel like that was the interpretation for that movie was someone saw that thing and was like, Oh, that's a horror movie. Oh yeah. Well there have been reports there have been reports down in South America and the giant anaconda be not just fifty feet. We're talking like bigger Stop than reading my god. I'm not reading anything. <laughs> you and I both grew up on this stuff. And, yeah. I, and heck, in that book, Cryptozoology A to Z, going to Giant Anaconda, there's an illustration mm-hmm. of a bunch of hunters in a boat looking up at a massive serpent. And that hunter was Percy H. Fawcett. All righty. A British geographer slash explorer that was tasked with finding lost cities of gold. And, you know, the standard, typical British fare of the 18 and 1900s. Ah, yeah, the... The age of exploration age and co- of... and colonization and genocide. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, back to giant snakes. Back to de- back to less downing topics. <laughs> so yeah, the giant anaconda reportedly seen by uh, Mr. Font. Fa- well, I think Colonel Fawcett, military. Whatever. Okay. Um, allegedly, he spotted this thing in 1925 in Brazil mm-hmm. or 1906. In Brazil. Yeah. And he disappeared in 1925 in Brazil. Oh, boy. He allegedly spotted this thing as he was floating down the Rio Negro the, uh, River with local tribesmen and fishermen and, you know, local group. Spotted a triangular head on a bank nearby. And, of course, being British and... An explorative man. Yeah. First thing he does is... Oh, right. I'm going to shoot it. Shoots it in the spine. Allegedly kills it with Mm -hmm. that shot. And then somehow manages to get this giant snake somewhere to where he and the group of people can measure it. Measured 45 feet out of the river and there was another 19 feet of snake in the water, totaling 62 feet in length. Whoa. If the Titan Boa was 47 feet mm-hmm. and weighed 2,500 pounds. And that's a baby. How did the, how did Percy and the rest of the tribe manage to get that thing out of the water without dying? Well, I mean, if you shoot it and you well, kill it. The weight. Uh, the if logistics you, of I mean, that if you alone. have enough people to hold it up. Like, I have seen... I've seen groups of people. I've seen groups of people out in Africa and even hell Australia holding up crocodiles. They're on my list too. We'll get there when we get there. But and then twelve inches in diameter, so a foot thick. A foot thick, a literal barrel of a body. Yeah. All I could find was literally that account, and also the accounts of Percy being eccentric. With his storytelling. Which, that is at that tracks. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna go out into these wilderness areas that your buddies haven't gone to I yet. I caught a snake, and it was this big. Yep. You're it's... going to make it fantastical. Oh, yeah. You're gonna absolutely. tell stories that people will absolutely believe, I mean, because... how else are you gonna get the hookers in England to, to love you? True. 
And also, plus also, you couldn't fact check this shit back then. No. Nowadays, it's like, picks or it didn't happen. True. But back then, your word was your honor because you were an honorable man, good sir. <laughs> <laughs> now let's drink our brandy infused with cocaine. And having a lovely cigar with some opium to add to it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, my point of that was those two creatures coinciding highly unlikely because we've gone through a couple ice ages and we've gone through a lot of shit from point a to point b yeah there have been also just species extinctions <clears throat> yeah due to due to you know, food supply going down human interaction deforestation lot, a bunch of different factors yeah. now and some people will say well it's just because we kill off nature now sometimes nature kills itself off yes i mean sometimes nature needs to put put it back in the box for a minute mm-hmm but those are fantastic. One's an actual creature, and one is most likely completely fantastical. But to set the record straight and to sort of compare those two monsters to what we have yep. here currently, average anacondas length anywhere from 15 on females to 9 to 10 feet on males. Mm -hmm. That's still a good-sized snake, but it's not... It's not a forty-seven foot nightmare. Not a not creature. a forty-seven foot behemoth. I've have been yeah. to a few, I've been a few to a few aquariums. Uh, Pretty good size. I mean, Oklahoma City Zoo has an anaconda that I think they said comes in about fourteen foot. I almost thought it was twenty. Yeah. It, it, but the Oklahoma's OKC Zoo has one. <clears throat> Tulsa Zoo has one. The Jinx San Aquarium. Diego. There's quite a few places that do have anacondas. Oh yeah, and they are huge. Like I've. I was like, it, it doesn't. I I know that they're not like gigantic proportions like these creatures, so, but there's still something to see. But the record holder, yeah, and she is still alive. Ooh, well, the the record length anaconda specifically anaconda uh, subspecies, twenty seven point six six feet. Ooh, weighed in at five hundred pounds. Okay, and the girth. Remember, uh, Percy said his uh, sixty-two foot monster was a was a whole, whole foot. Yeah, three point six foot girth at the at the widest. So, th so three feet, almost yeah, almost more than three and a half foot girth. Whew. Almost four feet. Good yeah. lord, that is a big snake. Now the record holder overall. Yes. Was a reticulated python in 1912. Mm -hmm. She was 32.8 feet. I've heard about her. Yeah. And there's actually in the anaconda. I have it in my notes somewhere. I forgot where I put it. Anyway, her name is Medusa. Mm, appropriate name. All right. Oh, okay, here it is. I just didn't read far enough down. Yeah. The largest on record currently alive domestic, well, not domestic, it's still a freaking wild animal. In captivity. In captivity snake is Medusa. Uh -huh. She's 19 years old, and she lives at the Edge of Hell Haunted House in Kansas City, Missouri. Edge of Hell Haunted House in Kansas City, Missouri. Take That's a name. 19 years old, she is, I believe she was a reticulated python as well. Take a wild guess on how big she is. Uh, I'm going to say 25 feet. Damn near, 25.16 feet. Damn! 350 pounds. I would not have gotten the weight right, because never ask a woman her weight. Nope. Especially that one, because she your face. Especially a snake. <laughs> so, yeah, uh... Snakes, great. I, my, I love looking at snakes. I love observing snakes. That's it. I've handled. I, I've, yeah, I've, I've handled you. snakes for. They're good for the, good for you. The skin is a little weird at first because it's a texture that we're very unfamiliar with oh, as yeah. as mammals. But it, I'm just like, huh. This is this is snake skin. Yeah, it's a little weird. But yeah, I m snakes are my frogs. I've never thought but that with you. But not to that degree. Like, I'm not, like, horrified of them. They're like clowns for me. Like, 
I don't like them. You can stay away from me, thank you. Okay. I'm not terrified of... Well, I'm terrified of them because snake teeth hurt. Yeah, because they're designed and to... And venom and yeah, all that. I don't want to mess with that. Mm-hmm. I like looking at them. I'll look at them through a glass, but I am not... No. Mm-mm. So, unlike... So, like, me and... For, like, me and most... Me and me and most amphibians, I legitimately, like cannot look at them oh, it terrifies yeah, i me. love looking at them. my favorite snake is a black mamba oh those are beautiful exactly but they're just as deadly but i'm not i'm not gonna see a black mamba oh pretty <laughs> i'm not doing that oh, no. i i I, I'll, I got a i'll be honest i got a couple of frogs that i like yeah the poison tree frog is one oh of them. yeah the darts the dart frogs are beautiful yeah then the actual like, green tree frog they're very yeah. unique looking and then finally a toad called the Sirenan toad that one's a fun one because it creeps people out. Because the I egg... don't, we don't have to talk about that. The baby's will have I'll a kill back. you. I'll kill you with a potato, right here. Ah, ah, um, no, 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 no. We're fine. We're fine. So, but yeah, that was. I wanted to talk about the Titan boa because that is just pure nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Fuda. Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> nightmare. <fuda. laughs> oh God. Uh, but yeah. And then I just want to rattle off some re- current record holders of modern day animals. Rattlesnakes. Yeah. Oh. Well, funny how you mentioned snakes and you go like rattle it off. Hey, rattlesnakes. Those are t- just as terrifying. Those things are evil. Those things are mean. So, the biggest great white shark. Mm hmm. Her name is Deep Blue. Deep Blue. I, I think I've heard about her. 50 years old, and she's not done growing. Is and, their estimate. Ooh. 20 feet, last yep. measurement. That sounds about right. 4,500 pounds. So she is one of the... So sharks, like gray whites, are uh, creatures of indeterminate size. Yes. They will get as big as their environment allows. Yep. Because that's what they do with lobsters, too. Lobsters, mm-hmm. if you give them the right thing, they can grow to massive proportions. Yes. So, obviously, that ties into megalodon. All, and megalodons can be their whole subtopic. Like, oh, yeah. I can do an episode on that. Oh, we could alone. easily do an episode on megalodon alone. But, yeah. Uh, Deep Blue is a massive, massive girl. And I've looked at photos. and Hell no. She, I'm, going to, I'm going to believe that she is a beautiful specimen of a shark. But she's not something you want to be in the water with. No. Um, if I was to ever... This is my actual. This is my actual real fear. Not snakes, deep water. Oh, you and me both, dude. I am. If I can't see my feet, if I can't see below me, mm-hmm. nope. Immediately, I am like, like I will not go in. I will not go in. You and I are absolutely by the water guys. I was gonna say to quote our favorite mutual podcast, we are near water. We are near water gentlemen. That's what we are. We do. I, I have. So I, I live in I live in Norman. I have set foot in Lake Thunderbird. Why would you do that? Did you find a body? No, I went with some I went with a couple of friends and alcohol was had. <laughs> no. So I I managed to get I managed to get at least knee deep in Lake Thunderbird. And you didn't find a body? No. My god. It was weird. And I just walked in and just no. I waited on in and I never got any further than that because that that fear still takes over. Yeah, I watched Jaws and Lake Placid and Anaconda too many times as a kid. <laughs> I it, yeah, and I watched a lot of horror based water movies. Like, what no. was it? What was it with the? What was it with like the mid to late nineties and early two thousands water based horror movies on TV? Not even water based, giant animal, giant animal water for me because yeah, because let's because I remember I remember Peter Benchley's The Beast with the giant squids. I remember Deep Blue Sea, yeah. Jaws, Anaconda, Creature, Lake Placid, Creature. No, yeah, there were so many of them. I'm just like, why? And so now I don't like go. I'll go in a boat. I will go in a boat to go fish. Yep, I have done that. And I am I more. I will not jump in after that fish. So nope, I'm. I will not. Like that fish gets away, he can keep the bait. Mm-hmm. I am not going anywhere near that. 
So we're going to make our way back to the land now, because now I'm uncomfortable. Good, because I, as much as as much as you and I also like, you know, pirates and stuff, we're very much land lovers. Yes. We will stick our feet to the ground. So we'll hop over to Africa. Okay. I'm not actually going to touch on hippos, because I'm not going to touch a hippo, because they're evil. The hippos, <laughs> they look all, oh, yeah, they're... Oh, they're cute and cuddly. No, those things are fast and they are mean. They're territorial, I think it is. So, I'm actually, I'm not going to mess with hippos. I'm going to go with rhinos. Oh. The white rhino subspecies, specifically. Largest one recorded, 10,000, 10,000 pounds. Uh-huh. With that big old unicorn horn on it. Largest one recorded was a 59-inch... Horn. 59 inch horn. Yeah. Uh, I'm having to do math. That's almost five feet. Yeah, that's your, that's in your realm. Good God. It, funny enough, I actually like rhinos. Oh yeah, they're cool. They're, they're one of the few, they're one of the few animals that I actually like seeing. Mm-hmm. Because, I, I think it's because of two reasons. One, the fact that they were the basis for the unicorn. Yeah. One of the basis for the unicorn. And two, they're very prehistoric looking, like almost like almost like a living dinosaur. Yeah, absolutely they are. African elephants. I know we touched on woolly mammoths, and the record holder surpasses that. Yes. Twenty four thousand pound African bull in Angola. Yep. Thirteen foot at the shoulder. Whew. And he had uh Write it down. Why didn't I write that down? His tusks were over five foot. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a big boy for sure. Mm-hmm. And they had a picture of him next to like one of those Land Rovers and Safari trucks. Towered right over it. Looked like it looked like forced perspective, like in Lord of the Rings. Oh wow! But you talked about it earlier. Crocodiles. Yep. The other nightmare fuel. Because nothing's creepier than a danger log. Especially danger log with teeth that can truly rend your flesh. So I'll give you the choice. Do you do we want to talk about Cassius or Lo Long first? Surprised you don't want to talk about Gustav. He's he, a he's another he, one. He was a man eater. He wasn't a record holder, but he was a man eater. He was pretty big though. He was big, but he wasn't as big as Cassius or Lo Long. Okay, uh I've, I'm, I briefly, uh, I'm familiar slightly with Leilong. Go ahead with Cassius. So Cassius is the current record holder. Okay. He had the title. Leilong took it. Leilong passed away. Cassius reclaimed. Mm. Uh, Cassius is a saltwater crocodile, of course, because they all are. Saltwater? Wouldn't he be Nile? No. Salty. Because we're in Africa. It's the no. Nile. Cassius is, well, sorry, I didn't... Uh, we're jumping to Australia now. There we go. I was like, Africa? No, he's not a Nile. He is a Salty from Aussie. Yeah, okay, there we go. I was, he got me confused. There he's from Steve like... Irwin land. Okay, fair enough. So Cassius currently is 18 feet long. Big boy. Weighs in at 2,866 pounds. Okay. He is... His current place of resignment, or a place of residence, is the Marineland Croc... Crocodile Park in Queensland, Australia. Okay. Old man is 110. He is a 110-year-old croc. He is 110 years old. So and he's he li- is dark. He, he is a has, big, black, evil-looking thing. He has lived through... He has lived through both world wars. Mm-hmm. He's fine with it. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I... Psh, I knew that they could live for a while... I didn't realize Go that... Go ahead and look up a picture of him. I'll have to. No, no. Mm. I can't oh, now. yeah, that's yeah, right. My... You don't have a phone. So. So but... he quite... So cr- truly his only inspiration to continue existing is spite. Probably. There he is. Cassius the Crocodile. Let me see him. As... There we go. I want your genuine first reaction from seeing Cassius. Holy shit! I knew you said a black crocodile. 
He is black. That is the he, darkest it, I have ever not, seen a crocodile. It is not an over He is black. I have never seen a dark crocodile. I've always seen them as that sandy... Sandy brown, sandy gray. Gray, green. I've seen them that. Never that black. Never yeah. that dark before. Yeah. Holy shit! He is a, uh, he's a big boy. No kidding. So. I can yeah. imagine him having, like, one clouded eye just sitting there. Perfect vision. He still does the leap up thing that they do. Oh. Well, not like, you know, not the straight up thing, but he like does the from, lurch. from thing. water to land sort of thing. Yeah. Where like, they, they get him with the chicken. Yeah. You can't pay me for that. I will not do that. Because my reactions are not as good as they used to be. <laughs> I I have a bit of a sidebar, just because I this thinking about this makes me think of uh, talking about this makes me think of this. Uh, a few years ago on the History Channel, Larry the Cable Guy did Only in America, uh -huh. and he actually went to I think it was a crocodile farm or an alligator farm here in the states, and at one point the at one point the crocodile or the the fucking lizard the fucking yeah, giant the black dinosaur lizard. lizard it 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 uh, did the little like leer like leer up mm. I have never seen that fat man run as fast as he did he bolted there was a oh. layer of the cable guy shaped cloud of smoke where he was <laughs> I have never seen him move that fast in my life yeah I was like oh god you couldn't pay me. I I love same thing with snakes I love looking at them I love observing them but no I wouldn't mind getting to touch one and i don't mean a little baby i don't want to hold a little baby i'm not baby. even sure i'd want to do that i don't want to hold i would love to go to see one where it is properly like you know held. like they've got the jaws clamped they've got yeah. everybody who's, an, who's there and then i can just like you know go up and you know pet it yeah i would do that just because so that way i can go all right because <laughs> i have done this now. i have pet a crocodilian mostly just because that those creatures right there are also remnants of a prehistoric era oh yeah and they still look they, they still look freaking prehistoric prehistoric as hell i mean they haven't changed minus their size because yeah. i've seen some prehistoric bad boys yeah. that make Lelong and cassius look like babies yeah so his usurper and then loser of the crown Low long, mm -hmm. we're gonna jump from Queensland, Australia to the Philippines. Wow. Okay. Still a saltwater crocodile. Low long measured in at his passing at twenty feet three inches. Definite big boy there. A little bit smaller or in weight, and I'll explain why it'll be obvious why shortly. Mm -hmm. Two thousand three hundred seventy pounds. Okay. Five hundred pound difference. Died at fifty years old. Okay. Pretty young for a croc. Definitely. Died February 10th of 2013. So. Been about 10 just years. Just about a decade ago to the day. Yep. He died in captivity from pneumonia and a cardiac arrest complicated by stress and fungal infections. Ah oh, man. That's the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Not to shit on that, but he was kept in a horrible environment. Very low water. He was, yeah, he was kept in uh, unfavorable conditions. Yeah. So that will absolutely do it. Yeah. Um, but I do have a picture, and they actually kept his body, mounted it for a while, and when his skin started, when the, I guess the taxidermy started failing, took it off, kept a skeleton, mounted that. Let's see. I, I definitely want to see this. So that is Lo Wong's body, preserved taxidermy style. Okay. And he was the tri more traditional sort of grayish gray, grayish green. Yeah. Color. Grayish tannish color. Yeah. yeah, he was a big boy. Yeah. But like I said, he was the usurper. They actually caught him in a creek in the Philippines. He was accused of killing a fisherman and a small child and then countless water buffalo and <laughs> cattle. And okay, so he was not a... He was a giant and a man-eater, but not to the extent of someone like Gustav. Yeah, and Gustav, they confirmed he died in, I want to 
to say 2019. Because, oh, you know, reading through these guys, Gustav came up. Now obviously. I'm now I'm sad. Right. Because Gustav was like, because Gustav, I learned about him when I was in high school, mm-hmm. and he was a fucking legend. Yeah. Because not only because it's like, was that him? Was he was practically a cryptid of his own. Oh yeah. And the only way that you could tell it was him was all the bullet marks on his back. Mm-hmm. Like, so we've discussed largest animals currently. How about ever? I like ever. Let's see what happens. The largest flying animal. Because I just broke it down, you know, flying water and earth. Yeah. Largest flying, fly, or capable flight creature was obviously Quetzalcoatlus. Yeah. The uh, monster terror bird. I still sort of keep in it, but paleontology is a constantly ever changing yeah. round table of fighting. Uh, Spinosaurus for the last three years has just been a nightmare. Yep, that one. That was fun, because one second it was bipedal, now it's quadrupedal. It's essentially like a giant it's croc. back up to bipedal now. It's, yeah. I'm, I, I'm in the, I am in the ballpark, I'm in the, I'm in the area yeah. where that it's but, actually I mean, a quadrupedal creature with a giant fin in its and back. And honestly, the bipedal happened like three weeks ago. Again. I don't think it was bipedal. I don't, I don't think, think it would so. have been possible. No, at least not fully like Jurassic Park. Though. Yeah, no, that one, that one was definitely strictly like fantastical fiction but quetzal had they're guessing large you know the biggest specimen might be like 52 55 feet i guess it's they're one. guessing the average is 36 to 39 okay so still big they're keeping large. ranges in the event that like you know some may have gotten older and lived longer than which is possible the gigantism effect of yep perfect ecosystem perfect storm of beneficial effects mm-hmm the largest uh, swimming. I feel like there should be a fancier way to marine life. Marine life. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for that basic word. I should have known. <laughs> uh, blue whale, obviously. Yeah, the blue that, whale is the one of the is the largest water based creature, and I think the largest creature on Earth. Yeah, currently, like existing. Uh, yeah, uh, in current existence. The largest one ever recorded was in the South Atlantic in 1909. 110 foot. Yep. Female. Yeah, she was a beauty. Sounds like it. And this one, I actually probably did about 20 minutes of research last night on it because I hadn't heard of this guy yet. So, I don't know how familiar you are with dinosaurs. Enough to hold hold a candle in a discussion. Oh yeah, Tony. When I, Tony, I was a dinosaur kid. Like you and I are both dinosaur kids, I the Titanosaur genome, Titanosaurus, yeah, the the whole genome, yeah, Argentinosaurus, Diplodocus, Brachiosaurus, Brachiosaurus, all the the, the, the old, monsters, the big ones. This one is the origin for the Titanosaur name, the Titanosaur itself, Patago Titan Mayorum, or Titanosaur, mm-hmm. starting is the reason that this became an entire sub genome of sauropods Mm -hmm. lived approximately 102 million years ago. So that would have been right at the beginning of the Cretaceous roughly or tail end of the Jurassic right in that cusp. Yeah. 120 foot long. Whoo. 69 tons. They discovered a femur Uh in Northern South America. Specific, well, specifically northern Argentina, where seven... That, northern Argentina, that's in the least central. Argentina's yeah. in the south. Okay. So it's at least central South America. Okay, so... Not north. Close enough. I know my geography. I went to class with a blue pen. <laughs> <laughs> Old references. That's a that's a joke from that's an inside joke for me and Tony. Uh, most titan, uh, I think it was six of the seven subgenome titanosaurs were in Argentina, Brazil, central north, central and north South America. Yeah. Uh, the femur was discovered in 2014, mm-hmm. and the creature and titanosaur was officially named in 2017. Yeah. 
The femur was eight feet tall. Good God. That's taller than you. Mm-hmm. And, like, half of you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at, like, it would be, like, two of me, one on top of the other for shoulders, uh, would be able to... And then, like, both your cats. Like, put a hand on there, because... <laughs> I'm looking... What do you think? This room is about eight feet tall, maybe a little less. Yeah, somewhere in there. Good God. That is a tall femur. That's a big shin bone. I did anatomy too. Shut up. Uh, I went to science. (laughs) But all those numbers, all those figures, all those various behemoths because that's what they are. They're behemoths. There's no other way to describe those Yeah, these those are... These a are a 12-foot chicken. These are titans. These are behemoths, leviathans. Um, these are monsters. If we go by timeline, I know I didn't go canonically time-wise, because we would have talked about Titan Titanosaur first. The trend is they got really big, and then they sort of died back down. And... I know it's just you and me's opinion on it. I'm sure yours is pretty similar to mine. But with them getting so big and having that perfect storm of the perfect environment, the perfect evolution strand, the perfect genes for that environment, the perfect adaptation for that, yeah, resulted in such massive creatures. I mean, there's no reason to have a 120 foot long giant fucking long neck lizard. Yeah. But, and then I actually read up on this. The theory is that in the Jurassic and Cretaceous and Triassic period, there was a 12% difference in oxygen on the planet mm-hmm. in the density. Oh, yeah. Not even the amount, just the sheer density of it. Mm hmm. Which would lead to a lot of undergrowth, because that that oxygen went down because of its density. But richer undergrowth, which read, led to a richer uh, soil, which led to better breathing for taller uh, plants, which led to taller animals. Yeah. Which led to 120 foot long neck lizards. Yeah. But, I mean, with the meat, assuming that's what happened at the end of the dinosaur era, with the meteor hitting and wiping that all out, starting with a clean slate, everything reset back. Wiping out all the top trees, that would have, because all the trees would have, a lot of the tall trees would have gone away. Those tall, the tall um, dinosaurs would have easily lost their food. There's one. Lost their heads. Oh, that too. (laughs) But they, but, it, it, and also I do think that there, as you said, it rises and falls too. It's uh-huh. also the fact that, um, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes nature kills itself. Yeah. Because you can have perfection as much as you can, but then well, eventually I mean, the Titan bow was only around for two million years. So eventually, like if you don't, if you can't find a sustainable enough food mm-hmm. source because you've eaten everything, mm-hmm. and a lot of these are quite no other way to put it, dumb animals. Mm-hmm. They don't have anything more than just food, food. Yeah. It's like, I, I it's like, um, the dodo. I actually, I, nice. I saw a video about the dodo bird recently, just a brief history on the thing. They were birds that came to this island, Mauritania, Mauritius, or one of the two. My brain shut off on that one. <laughs> but these birds, they had no natural predators. They had ample food. And then they eventually grew to have the they they grew up and adapted and had and had this immediate lack of fear. Yeah. They were in such a perfect preservation. Well, it's like those um, little rodents on that one island that take selfies with people. Oh yeah. There's no innate fear, and that's sort of one of the bad genes that sort of made its way in is the lack of fear of natural pred- predators and natural, you know. Uh, volcanoes or tornadoes or natural events that happen it just it didn't happen so we don't need to worry exactly and i mean the dodos were what three four foot tall massive chicken birds they were pretty decent sized and the last recorded ones were in the 1600s yeah 
potentially <clears throat> the 1700s, but that's up for debate. Yeah, but I mean, that's a perfect example of that gigantism sort of taking effect is that they flew in. They weren't that big when they got there. They were tiny little dove-like birds. And they adapted and evolved into these giant flightless chickens. With no sense of fear. With no sense of fear. And that's the gigantism sort of taking effect and turn and adapting it into, well, we'll just get big because we have this huge supply of food mm-hmm. and we have no predators to worry about being tiny and hiding from. We'll just, you know, loud and proud and then you get murdered. Yep. But like with the Titan Boa, climate change, and then with the Ice Age hitting, wiping everything and starting clean, it basically started back at ground zero mice and small and you know insects and small animals and then we evolved into you know saber tooth tigers and megatheriums and woolly mammoths and you know eventually people the, the woolly rhinos the too. woolly rhinos and the um the giant apes and all these the the megalithic sort of era yeah with all these giant mammals you know not as big as you know Titanosaur or Brachiosaurus, but still massive in their own right. Oh, yeah. You know? And then, mm-hmm. uh, you mentioned the woolly rhino. All the subspecies of rhinos that predated the rhino as they were and looked more like armored giraffes. Yeah. And being 20 foot tall. You know, that's that gigantism of there was no natural predators because they evolved into this, into this branching. And then by the time they got that big, you know, they had no natural predators. And then humans. Yep. And then humans ruined it. <sighs> and that's what is one, of, I think, one of the leading effects of why we see smaller animals each year. And what's caused this whole uh, train of thought was I was watching the news at work and someone, it was one of the local channels, and of course it being Oklahoma, they talk about you know who caught the biggest fish sort of thing. Someone caught the eighth biggest small mouth bat, small mouth bass in Oklahoma history. Huh. At fourteen pounds. And that's actually still a pretty sizable fish. It's still sizable, but I remember I'm, my my uncle had the largest large mouth bass in Alabama for two years, and it was like twenty seven pounds. Good God. Most of the most of the bass I've caught have been one to two pounds. Yeah. So I can only imagine a twenty pounder. Yeah. Ooh. But that's like that's the thing is like <clears throat> overfishing, over hunting, over oh, yeah. population of humans and infringing on ecosystems of animals. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're seeing we see raccoons and coyotes and all these animals that bears, bears. I mean, all those animals are losing their ground and they're having to get smaller and adapt. And they're coming into human civilization as well because I've yeah. seen so many videos of like. Uh, mama black bears and mm-hmm. their cubs getting stuck in dumpsters and people yeah. having to save them yeah. while dealing with the mama who's yeah. not happy. Nope. But then you look at like, I mean, the largest blue whale ever was back in 1909. Mm-hmm. And there's not been anything near that big. I mean, the average length of a blue whale has gone down from 100 feet from when I remember reading about them in the late 90s to now the average is like 82 feet. Ugh. Like, and that's... It's a that death. infringement of everything and adapting to the environment. We... Man, this sounds like a TED Talk. It we has gotten... people suck. But... <laughs> but animals are having to adapt to us and that is causing smaller and smaller instead of bigger and bigger Mm -hmm. and uh pollution being a huge thing of it causing mutations in animals and causing you know uh, sterileness and you know causing all these other issues in animals and causing smaller and smaller batches of eggs and smaller and smaller litters of creatures yeah you know it, animals are having to adapt to us and we are doing the exact opposite of what it what used to be done when we first started coming into existence 
it is a complete 180 of what we used to of what of how the world used to run mm-hmm. and it's n- no longer the biggest wins it's the smartest or the one with the most technology pretty much but yeah I, n- I know this has come off sort of like a ted talk but it's this, just this and, definitely went away i didn't expect it to yeah and i i sort of felt like it was gonna go that direction but Talking about all the, you know, the Titan Boa and the giant sloths and all these massive creatures. And then, I mean, even our record-holding ones can't hold a candle to them anymore. No. I mean, Medusa's only 25 foot, and Titan Boas, on average, were 40 foot. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a whole different animal. And it's I just found it extremely interesting, that sort of curve of, you know, Animals got big, something massive and crazy happened. It started back from zero, got back up, and that natural order of it sort of caps and then it goes back down. Yeah. And I think we're sort of, I think we're the cause of this last sort of uphill and then plateauing. And then we're sort of, I think we're sort of on the downhill of oh. animal sizes. In. A, a lot of this allegory does actually make me think mm. of something. And it does actually involve like forces of nature. And I'm not trying to be funny about this, I'm actually being very serious. Yeah. Is <clears throat> since we're talking about giant animals, there's we have giant monsters in fiction, mm-hmm. like Godzilla, for example, and King Kong. King Kong was on an island and he was the apex predator, mm-hmm. minus the like T Rex looking creature he had to fight. Yeah, whatever. But like t- on Skull Island, in the various depictions of Skull Island, the animals there are huge because they are they live in a perfect environment. Mm-hmm. They have minimal contact with the human tribe that lives there. They have the only natural predators are the literal predators that live on the island, the giant yeah. T-Rexes and everything. And then Godzilla. Godzilla was designed in the 1950s after Japan had been bombed in the end of World War II and was created as a, as a, uh, a metaphor for the nuclear fallout of the atomic age that we were brought into in the 50s. Yep. I mean, if you hear his roar, it sounds like an air raid siren when you think about it. It does. I did a, I did a whole paper in college about Godzilla, yeah. both in senior seminar and history seminar. Yeah, and that's sort of segues in my last point of, you know, about Bigfoot and not so much the chupacabra. But, yeah, no. Um, like Thunderbirds and all these other massive animals from early human civilization and from you know Native Americans and years from, ago legends uh, and myths. Aboriginals. All these people talk about giant, you know, giant animal, you know, giant crocodiles, giant eagles, giant bears. They probably weren't wrong. No. Like, it may not have been, you know, the giant cave bears that we used to have, you know, in the land of, or in the era of the giant mammals. But there was no pollution from humans. There was very minimal contact. And we were all still in that tribal state, you know, that hunter-gatherer nomadic Mm -hmm. form animals were probably actually that big because they had we had less defense as human beings because we had spears and bows and arrows but that's not going to bug a 20 foot tall cave bear that can dissect you with one claw thinking on that i mean but, I'm, they say the world really has gotten smaller mm-hmm. in a manner putting it in this perspective with animals it's right yeah because i mean there were eagles that could pick up moa chicks. And the last ones were in the late eighteen or early 1800s, I think. Eh. And now, somewhere in there, I think. But now the largest bird, or largest bird of prey is, I think, the Andean con- condor. Andean condors are pretty big. And they're big, but they're scavengers. Mm-hmm. And there's, like... Yeah, I can count on my hands and toes how many there are in the world still, I think. A couple, let's see, a few hundred of that. Yeah. Think. But that's my point is, the bigger the bigger the animal nowadays, the more of a target it is on your back for trophy hunters, sustenance farming and hunting. Mm-hmm. 
or just idiots. Yep. And the world has adapted to us, and the world has gotten smaller because of it. And I just found it interesting that we had this era when we were we were nowhere near the top of the food chain because we had bears, we had dire wolves, we had actual dire wolves. Yep. We had all these predators that could have easily just wiped us. Yeah, I'm a dire wolf. I am familiar a little bit with those. The dire wolves were actually about the same size as your standard gray wolf. Yeah. But they were a lot beefier. Mm-hmm. That was it. When they're not they are they're not the size that we see on like Game of Thrones yeah. or in, you know, D&D. They're But they had the size. They didn't have the height size, but they had they were they were built. They were built and they were very much like they could take you down. Yeah. They weren't they weren't nearly as big as we'd like to think of them in fiction. Yeah. And yeah, I mean it it literally this whole f- sort of spiral I had was just a photo of a guy holding a 14 pound fish saying it was the eighth biggest one. I was like that's that's big. It's not that big. Why is that the eighth biggest? I'm like 14 pounds? Come on. Yeah, I mean it's big. It, that's a big fish, but I remember seeing, you know, those old-timey sh- photos of, you know, sharks that were caught off the coast of Maryland and stuff. Monsters. Oh, yeah. I remember. And now if you do that now, it's like you're not going to get, the, you're not going to find that many that size anymore. If you find that one that's that size, it's been around since the time of that photo was taken. Exactly. That's... Or it's deep blue. Mm-hmm. But nobody, I don't think anybody's going to catch Deep Blue. She's monitored. Yeah, she's monitored and she's protected. But that's my point is like we have we have caused the world to get smaller, animals included. And it's, mm-hmm. I think it's just fascinating that we have had such an effect on evolution that way or an inadvertent effect on evolution that way that we don't have MOAs. We don't have, you know, Titan MOAs, thank God. We don't have ancient, uh, prehistoric devil frogs. Because <laughs> we probably would have hunted those for the frog. Well, France would have hunted those for the frog legs. <laughs> and yeah, I just found it really interesting. And I just wanted to do a little bit of a deep dive on it. Because I've always found that Paleolithic era of gigantic mammals really interesting. Yeah. I didn't expect this. I didn't expect how this was going to go. And... I could definitely see how a lot of these giant monster, a lot of these giant animals, could have been the basis for a bunch of different myths and legends. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. even just going off of dinosaurs. Not even talking about those yeah. alone. Yeah, because that's that, that's my next episode. <laughs> we got plans for that one. But I mean, and to sort of round it all out, um, going back to Percy Fawcett in Brazil in 1906. Yeah, it may not have been a Titan boa. But it was 1906 in the Amazon. That very well could have been an actual 69, almost 70 foot long anaconda. Absolutely. With, you know, again, that perfect storm of environment, evolution, genes, and being the apex predator. Lack of human interaction. Who's to say? Because, I mean, it is also the Amazon. The Amazon is massive. Yeah. And back then it was even bigger. Mm hmm. So, and if he was as deep as, because I looked up the Rio Negro va- uh, River, it is a tributary for the Amazon River. It's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And if you're sailing down that in 1906, I could, I could almost see it. I could, om- I would almost say, given the circumstances and given that, given the environment being right, there could have easily been a snake that massive. It may have looked haggard. It may have had some scars and some battle bruises. But it very well could have existed. And that's just sort of, you know, rounding the serpent back out and biting its own tongue. That's, that's sort of one of the loop around on that. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that, that sort of flow chart of, that those dips and those plateaus and those dips. It's going to keep happening, I think. Yeah. With I'll... or without us. Like, oh, yeah. Th- we'll be the catalyst for one, for the next one, I think. Mm-hmm. But after the world writes itself, we're going to start back at zero and yeah. build back up. 
that's how nature is. Na- nature is a constant changing mm-hmm. cycle. It never really, uh, it never stays put. No. There's always change. Yeah. So, I think that's the end of my episode. That's... Yeah, that was a lot to unpack, and man, I was actually impressed. A lot of this stuff, I some of it I knew, some of it I didn't, and I actually learned a lot. This is pretty cool. And that's, that's what we're here for. We're just here to chat and bullshit about a bunch of this stuff, and this was just that. Yeah. I like it. And let's see, this was episode 9, so episode 10 is coming up, which means we have another serial killer you episode. <laughs> I'm going to be ready for your reactions. I've got a list of them, I'm so... I'm going to print you that frog out. Blech. I'm going to put it right here on the back of the box. <laughs> so you have to stare at it. Uh, we w- I will have a serial killer for Tony next t- episode. So... Mm. And of course, I'm not going to say what it is, because uh, I like his reactions. I hate you. <laughs> Potato. Well, that's it for this episode, everybody. Again, if you would like to follow us on socials, it is Tall and Short Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. We also have an email, which is tallandshortpod at gmail.com. That is T A L L A N D S H O R T pod, P O D, at gmail.com. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have an amazing day. Don't kill anyone with potatoes. <laughs>